is up what is up what is up welcome to the mitch davis show it is march madness time sec tournament week and you know what that means folks that means my good friend and mentor sean smith founder of gobigbluecountry.com co-host of kentucky daily is joining me right now to talk all things kentucky basketball exciting times to be a kentucky fan sean how are you doing and how are the wildcats doing i'm doing fantastic uh mitch uh, i'm really grateful that you're having me on I always enjoy coming on your show around this time of year and then during football season but uh hey can Kentucky fans they're they're ready for this stretch run that they're about to go on it's been a while right they didn't get the NCAA tournament in 2020 didn't make the NCAA tournament in 21 uh haven't made a run since 2019 to the elite eight so I think BBN is ready to uh to get down there to Tampa and start some postseason play Let's, before we talk about the men's basketball, I've got to ask you about the women's basketball team. SEC champion, 10 straight wins. Kyra Elsie's got their, her Kentucky Wildcats playing at a very high level. What are your takeaways from that SEC tournament run for the women's side of things? That's a team that they got right against South Carolina a month ago in, in a game that they lost at Memorial Coliseum. I, I was watching that game, and the way Kentucky had been playing in January and early February, I fully expected South Carolina to, to beat them 30 plus that day, but it was about an 18, 20 point game. And then Kentucky made a run and got it down to right at single digits. And they, they showed a lot of fight in the way that they came back and South Carolina really struggled in the second half of that game. And that's the moment that they turned their season around. They, they got some people back. Dre Edwards was suspended for four games earlier in the year they had some injuries. Robin Benton was out for a while. Uh, very thin. I mean, had to dip all the way into the, the bottom of the bench to, to get minutes and get quality minutes out of. And, and I just think that that was deflating for them for the longest time. But when they got healthy, they built some confidence. Kyra Elsie never flinched. Uh, I, I talked to a couple of people that were very close to Kyra, and they said that January, February was very hard on her, that she was beating herself up a lot about why isn't this team winning? We, we have talent. Let's just stay the course. We're, we're doing the best we can. I mean, you're talking about a player in Ron Howard, the, the greatest to ever play on the women's program, and, and one of the greatest, honestly, Mitch, to, to ever play in UK athletics, regardless of sport. And she was about to go out without making the NCAA tournament, nothing really to show for when it comes to success on the floor with a championship. And, and they got down there to Nashville. They got healthy, built some momentum. And I think once they got through that LSU game on Friday night, the way that they won that, I don't, I just don't think that they were going to settle for anything else. And that, that championship game against South Carolina, they weren't intimidated at any point. And on the other side, I don't think South Carolina ever thought for a moment that Kentucky was going to beat them. Even when it was a close game late, I thought South Carolina thought, ah, we'll find a way to win this thing by three or four. And you could see the reaction on that shot. As soon as Dre Edwards hit that shot, South Carolina was defeated. They, they had no game plan for it. They didn't have any timeouts. They were not prepared for that at all. And it just credit to Kentucky for just one of the most memorable runs in any sport that I can remember in UK athletics history. John, I want to ask you about the ceiling for this women's team. Obviously, 10 straight wins. Is this a team that could somehow sneak into the Final Four? After what I just watched this week, I wouldn't put it past them, honestly. I mean, when you you beat the overall number one seed, I mean, you saw it yesterday in the AP poll, South Carolina didn't even drop. So that's the respect that that team gets and uh, well coached by Don Staley. And I mean, it's that that stretch of LSU, Tennessee and South Carolina. That is in a sweet 16 elite eight final four stretch of teams that they beat there just to win the SEC tournament. That's going to prepare them for this next tournament. So they entered that one projected to have to win a game against Mississippi State to make sure that they were in the NCAA tournament. So instead of going, I think they went from a 12 seed to a 7 seed in the matter of 72 to like 90 hours in three to four days. So I would say that this is a team, Mitch, that if they can survive the first weekend and if they're, they're going to have to beat a two seed, if they're a seven, they're going to have to beat a two on its home floor. If they can get through that weekend, I think that this is a team with Ron Howard, Dre Edwards, they're averaging 20 plus points per game. That duo is the last 10 games in this winning streak that they're having. I think it's a team that could sneak into that elite eight round. And if they get a favorable matchup, maybe win it. And uh, when you, when you look at it though, they're, they're going to have to give a two seed 
uh, a really hard time on a two seeds home floor. That that'll be the key game. But there's no way if you're a two right now, do you want to look up and see Kentucky as your seven, the SEC tournament champion uh, coming in as a seven seed? That that seems like a, a matchup that no one really wants to see right now as a one or a two. Sean, before we move over to the men's side, I want to ask you about John Calipari. On Sunday, the viral video went around. He lost his Rolex watch. Talk about that. And I want to ask you, because you're more around the program, you're more around Coach Calipari, but it really seems like he cheers on the other programs. And really, truthfully, there's no other program in all of college basketball and all college athletics that does it like Kentucky. Talk about Coach Cal's impact on just being a fan, going down there, losing his Rolex, getting excited. Talk about that impact on not only just a women's sport, but overall for the athletics department. Yeah, and Ellen always right there beside of him as well. And I just think that that's a big deal. Like anytime something happens, whether it's football, whether it's women's basketball, baseball, uh, rifle. It, it doesn't matter what the sport is. Cal tweets about it or mentions it in a press conference. And, and I think that's a big deal, especially coming from a guy who who just gets the the attention that John Calipari gets. And when you look up in the stands and ESPN showing him celebrating and it's almost like he's cheering and coaching his team from two rows behind the bench. I, I think that's a big deal for the fan base, because when they turn on the TV, and they see Cal doing that. I just think that it brings a lot of light to to that program and to that team. And you saw that the other day, like Twitter on Sunday, actually Twitter throughout that entire tournament from Friday night through Sunday afternoon, you'd have thought that the Kentucky men's basketball team was going on a run in the NCAA tournament. I've said that as far as numbers on my website, you you wouldn't have known you would have thought it was the final four I mean it, it matched some of the numbers that I've had in the past and the last 48 hours has been incredible on my website and it's not been because of the men's team winning at Florida or the SEC tournament coming up it was because of the women's team winning the SEC women's tournament in Nashville and I think it's really cool that Cal does that he he takes these programs he takes these head coaches and he's always in their corner he is pitching for their players like we've seen him with Ron Howard with the with the hashtag crowner and, and all that, the, the theme that they started there for her as an All-American, he's always been right there. And I think that's a huge deal when your head coach does that of your men's basketball program. Sean, jumping over to the men's side of things, obviously the win over Florida is a massive win. How would you grade the regular season? And heading into the postseason, how excited are you to watch this Kentucky team? I have to grade it an A because going into the year when we made predict predictions on uh, Kentucky Daily and on sources say, I said I thought this Kentucky team would win 24 to 25 regular season games. Well, they're at 25, but they could have won a couple more had they been full strength. Like if they'd have had their guys at LSU early in the season, I think they would have finished with 26 wins and, or, uh, and would have got there to, to that number and, and maybe could have got the 27 had they been healthy against Auburn and, and some others, maybe Tennessee there in Knoxville. But I have to give it an A for what they've done. Coming off a 9-16 and 16 year, you have a bunch of new faces, and it's not freshman faces, it's transfers. It's, it's guys that have collegiate experience that took a bit to kind of figure out their roles and what they were. You have a guy in Kellen Grady who was is one of the best scorers in college basketball history. I think he's like approaching the top 130 all time. And when it comes to men's basketball scorers and he comes to Kentucky and he's asked to do something different. He became a three point specialist this year. That that's what his role has been. I think that's going to get him drafted or maybe not drafted, but it's going to probably give him an opportunity to have a seven to 10 year career in the NBA because the way the league is now, if you can shoot the ball, you can play in the league. Michael Mulder, perfect example. That didn't get minutes at Kentucky, and then he's uh, found a way to play in the NBA the last few years. So I just think that the regular season that they had was about as good as it could get, and it set them up for some tournament success. And this feels like a team, Mitch, that's entering postseason play. You know, Gonzaga, Baylor, Kansas, all these teams are good. Auburn, Tennessee. I just don't think there's a team out there, though, that's more prepared for this tournament and this, this postseason than Kentucky. And, and I say that because they've, they've played the tough road games. They've dealt with injury. They've, they've had guys out. They've had their entire backcourt out for a couple of games. I think that they're prepared for whatever they face where some of these other programs, they haven't gone through that adversity to that level. And I think it's going to bode well for Cal's team. I want to ask you about the elephant in the room. Is Kentucky healthy? And most importantly, is Ty Ty Washington 
healthy as Kentucky gets ready for Friday night's SEC tournament matchup. He said today he's back to 100%. He, he and Xavier Wheeler and Oscar Shibwe met with the media today. We'll also hear from Cal on Thursday. Uh, they'll, be in, they'll be leaving for Tampa on Wednesday. So Tata said he's 100%. I think it's a good sign that he's played three games with no hiccups. I know there was a, a little bit of a scary play there late in Florida where a Florida player kind of uh, rolled over on that leg, and, and Tata made a face there and kind of looked like he was in pain, but he stayed in the game and, and pushed through it. I think him playing three in a row has been a big deal. He needs to get two to three here in Tampa and – and then get to that NCAA tournament. But I'm going to say that he's back to 100%. The minutes that he's played the, the last game, that, that shows that he's back to that, to that level. Now, the thing that I'm looking for, Mitch, they need him to get back to that 14, 15, 16 points consistently. And I know he had six points on Saturday, four of those at the free throw line late. He hit one basket early in the game. I've been saying that I wanted to see him go for 22 to 23 against a really good team because when you look across the season that Kentucky's had, the one thing that's missing to me is they didn't win a close game against a really good opponent. They beat Kansas by a lot. They beat Tennessee at Rupp Arena by a lot. All the teams that they beat that are good, they, they just beat them by 30 points or 20 points. They haven't had to ground out a close game against the team that I consider a second weekend, final weekend of the NCAA tournament team. And then Tata hasn't had his big games in those matchups. He scored off his points against some of the, the lesser competition. I want to see him in Tampa get a game where he goes for 21 against an Auburn or against a Tennessee or an Arkansas and makes game when he plays down the stretch. But if he can get to 15 to 16 consistently, I think this team can cut down the nets and not just in Tampa, but I think beyond Tampa. Every year that Kentucky makes a deep run in the NCAA tournament, the SEC tournament, there always seems to be one player that maybe didn't for you know perform as well in the regular season whether that be a Josh Harrelson a Darius Miller Dominique Hawkins you go down the list of Kentucky players through the history what is one or two of those players that Kentucky fans maybe not have seen the full potential out of but you can see having a big march John Calipari wants it to be Damian Collins from everything that we've gathered and I know Damian was out with that shoulder injury on Saturday, and I know Cal said it last uh, Tuesday after the Ole Miss game that Damian's going to be the reason they win or lose a round or two in that NCAA tournament. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I think that the reason Cal's saying that is because the one thing that's missing from this team, Mitch, that Kentucky has always had on its teams that were contenders uh, to win a national championship, they don't have that elite rim protector on the back end. And I think that Damien's length and athleticism can kind of be disruptive, even if it's for a five or six or seven minute stretch. Uh, I think that's what Cal's looking for. I think Cal wants him to be that guy consistently off the bench, maybe even over Bryce Hopkins and some other guys that have kind of been hit or miss all season, but I'm going to go a different direction with this. And, and I think the guy that's really going to step up and make plays in March is going to be Jacob Toppin. And I know Keon Brooks is going to continue starting at that four spot. But I think a guy like Jacob Toppin who can come in and he's high energy, he's going to fly in and get a put-back dunk or two, he's going to make a block, he's going to dive on the floor, he's going to show the ability to, to hit a 14, 15-foot jumper. His ability to defend one through four and then that energy off the bench, I think that will be a guy that will come in and there's going to be one or two times where we're talking about him making a game-winning play, whether that be in Tampa or the NCAA tournament. Uh, that's a guy to keep an eye on. Sean, looking at the matchups, obviously we know the names Auburn, Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, Alabama, Florida, even Vanderbilt. Sean, out of those teams, obviously Auburn, Arkansas, out Tennessee, but in that Thursday slate, who are the teams that could give Kentucky troubles when it comes to Saturday, Sunday of the SEC tournament? You know, I was going through the bracket yesterday on Kentucky Daily trying to figure out, and I asked Derek the same question. You obviously, right now, if you picked, you would feel confident in picking one of those top four to win this tournament, and rightfully so. They've been the four best. Three of them ranked in the top ten of the AP poll, Arkansas at number 15. There's four SEC teams there, Mitch, that I think you could look up and see on the, the second weekend of the NCAA tournament in that Sweet 16, Elite Eight, and maybe even beyond that to the Final Four. But there's a couple of teams that I've got my eye on, and it's the desperate teams. You've got, you got Florida there in that Thursday round playing Texas A&M. Texas A&M, both 
them and Florida, I think, are on Lenardi's next four out list. So that's an elimination game. Whoever loses it, they're done. No NCAA tournament. The winner will advance to play Auburn. And if you beat, if you win that Thursday game and then you get a win against a team that is on the border of a one or a two seed, you're starting to talk about playing your way into the NCAA tournament when you get into resumes and net and all these other things that they look at. Texas A&M would be a team that I watch, that I'd watch for. I think they've been playing better the last two to three weeks. I know they had one four straight going into this tournament. A uh, team on the bottom half of the bracket that I like, I've, I've liked Vanderbilt all year, honestly. I think that that's Jerry Stackhouse, if, they, if he stays there and they give him time, I could see that being a team that makes the NCAA tournament in the next couple of years. I think that they've been very competitive this year. They've let a couple of close games slip away. I know they had a close one with Tennessee. They had a close one with Auburn. I know they were right there, or not with Auburn, but with Alabama, a close one with Florida. They've been right there. I actually think that Kentucky is going to play Vandy Friday night in that quarterfinal round. I think Vandy's going to beat Georgia, and then I think they're going to beat Alabama. And I think Kentucky's going to look up and be playing Scotty Pippen Jr. in the first game of the SEC tournament. And uh, that's a team that somebody asked me a few weeks ago, who do you not want to play in this tournament? And Scotty Pippen Jr. and Vandy is that team because they always seem to grind out close games against Kentucky. They lose them, but they're always frustrating games that Scotty Pippen Jr. always manages to get 28 plus. And that's my sleeper team this week in that tournament. Also pay attention to Frank Martin in South Carolina. We know as well coached as that team is when he gets them to buy in and they get into a tournament format, they usually perform well. Uh, so this, this league, even though the top four are there, I hope that Chalk holds, and I hope we get those top four on the semifinals on Saturday and in the championship game on Sunday. But it wouldn't shock me if we look up and there's two of those teams and then there's two lower-ranked teams in the semifinals on Saturday. I think the league's that good. Sean, last question I have for you. How confident are you in Kentucky's chances this weekend to cut down the nets down there in Tampa? And how confident are you to see look up and see Auburn facing Kentucky off in the SEC championship game? I hope that's the championship game. I really do because the, it, it'll be good for the league. You have these two teams, and Mitch, when you look at it, I mentioned the AP poll a minute ago with three top ten teams from the uh, from the SEC, and then Arkansas in the top fifteen. Uh, you got Alabama receiving votes. We know what LSU's done at times this year. For them to have the Kentucky and Auburn matchup for the league to get that on Sunday, it would make the committee have to pay attention to the SEC championship game for the first time. I think in a long time, because Lenardi's already said it, is that the winner of the SEC, if it's Kentucky or Auburn, likely gets a one seed. The winner of the Big 12 between Baylor and Kansas likely gets the other one. It would be exciting to see two top five teams battle it out on Sunday in Tampa. It's hard to say, but I'm confident that that's the matchup we'll see. I think Kentucky's going to get into this tournament, and the reason why I think they're going to advance is because John Calipari doesn't make this bigger than what it is. Uh, he knows he's, he's coaching this thing a number of times. He's won it six times. I think it's one of those things that you look at and the, the experience of Cal being there and, and everything. You, you saw Auburn win the league last week and Confetti Falls, and that's great. You know, that's a program that they had to share that last one with Tennessee a few years ago, so they needed to celebrate that way. But it's hard to celebrate like that and then get yourself right again to win something else. And, and I just think that Kentucky's approach to this tournament is more about, you know what, it's, it's not about winning it. It's about winning each individual game. It's about improving our seed. And I think that's why you see Cal's teams do so well in this tournament is they, they approach it differently, and then they look up and there's no pressure on it, and they end up winning the thing. So I'm going to say 75% Kentucky-Auburn in the title game on Sunday. If it's not Kentucky-Auburn, mm, I'm going to say – Kentucky, Arkansas. I could, I could see Arkansas getting there as well. I don't think Tennessee is going to win a rematch with Kentucky on a neutral floor. Is, is I'm confident that Kentucky beats Tennessee on a neutral floor. He is Sean Smith. Tell them where they can follow all of your amazing work. Look forward to chatting with you again next week to talk in the play tournament. Uh, yeah, you can find my work at GoBigBlueCountry.com. You can follow me on Twitter at GBB Country. I'm the co-host of Kentucky Daily on Blue Wire Pods. And also uh, co-host of Sources Say on Kentucky Sports Radio. You can find those podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Thanks, Sean, for coming on. I appreciate it, Mitch.